Jammu and Kashmir is a state in northern India. It is located mostly in the Himalayan mountains, and shares a border with the states of Himachal Pradesh and Punjab to the south. Jammu and Kashmir has an international border with China in the north and east, and the line of control separates it from the Pakistan-controlled territories of Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan in the west and northwest, respectively. The state has special autonomy under Article 370 of the Constitution of India, a part of the erstwhile princely state of Kashmir and Jammu. The region is the subject of a territorial conflict among China, India and Pakistan. The western districts of the former princely state known as Azad Kashmir and the northern territories known as Gilgit Baltistan have been under Pakistani control since 1947. The Aksai Chin region in the east, bordering Tibet, has been under Chinese control since 1962. Jammu and Kashmir consists of three regions. Jammu, the Kashmir Valley and Ladakh. Srinagar is the summer capital, and Jammu is the winter capital. The Kashmir Valley is famous for its beautiful mountainous landscape, and Jammu's numerous shrines attract tens of thousands of Hindu pilgrims every year. Ladakh, also known as Little Tibet, is renowned for its remote mountain beauty and Buddhist culture. Jammu and Kashmir is the only state in India with a Muslim-majority population. History Accession Maharaja Hari Singh became the ruler of the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir in 1925, and he was the reigning monarch at the conclusion of the British rule in the subcontinent in 1947. With the impending independence of India, the British announced that the British paramountcy over the princely states would end, and the states were free to choose between the new dominions of India and Pakistan or to remain independent. It was emphasized that independence was only a backquote theoretical possibility because, during the long rule of the British in India, the states had come to depend on British Indian government for a variety of their needs including their internal and external security. Jammu and Kashmir had a Muslim majority. Following the logic of partition, many in Pakistan had expectations that Kashmir would join Pakistan. However, the predominant political movement in the Valley of Kashmir was secular and was allied with the Indian National Congress since the 1930s. So many in India too had expectations that Kashmir would join India. The Maharaja was faced with indecision. On the 22nd of October 1947, rebellious citizens from the western districts of the state and Pashtun tribesmen from the northwest frontier province of Pakistan invaded the state, backed by Pakistan. The Maharaja initially fought back but appealed for assistance to the Governor-General Louis Mountbatten who agreed on the condition that the ruler accede to India. Maharaja Hari Singh signed the instrument of accession on 26 October 1947 in return for military aid and assistance, which was accepted by the Governor-General the next day. While the Government of India accepted the accession, it added the proviso that it would be submitted to a reference to the people after the state is cleared of the invaders, since only the people, not the Maharaja, could decide where Kashmiris wanted to live. It was a provisional accession. Once the instrument of accession was signed, Indian soldiers entered Kashmir with orders to evict the raiders. The resulting Indo-Pakistani War of 1947 lasted till the end of 1948. At the beginning of 1948, India took the matter to the United Nations Security Council. The Security Council passed a resolution asking Pakistan to withdraw its forces as well as the Pakistani nationals from the territory of Jammuhan. Kashmir, and India to withdraw the majority of its forces leaving only a sufficient number to maintain law and order, following which a plebiscite would be held. A ceasefire was agreed on 1 January 1949, supervised by UN observers. 
a special United Nations Commission for India and Pakistan was set up to negotiate the withdrawal arrangements as per the Security Council resolution. The UNCIP made three visits to the subcontinent between 1948 and 1949, trying to find a solution agreeable to both India and Pakistan. It passed a resolution in August 1948, proposing a three-part process. It was accepted by India but effectively rejected by Pakistan. In the end, no withdrawal was ever carried out, India insisting that Pakistan had to withdraw first, and Pakistan contending that there was no guarantee that India would withdraw afterwards. No agreement could be reached between the two countries on the process of demilitarization. India and Pakistan fought two further wars in 1965 and 1971. Following the latter war, the countries reached a similar agreement, agreeing on a line of control between their respective regions and committing to a peaceful resolution of the dispute through bilateral negotiations. Debate over accession The primary argument for the continuing debate over the ownership of Kashmir is that India did not hold the promised plebiscite. In fact, neither side has adhered to the UN resolution of 13 August 1948, while India chose not to hold the plebiscite. Pakistan failed to withdraw its troops from Kashmir as was required under the resolution. India gives the following reasons for not holding the plebiscite. We, the people of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, having solemnly resolved, in pursuance of the accession of this state to India which took place on the 26th day of October, 1947, to further define the existing relationship of the state with the Union of India as an integral part thereof, and to secure to ourselves justice social, economic and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship, equality of status and of opportunity, and to promote among us all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 17th day of November. 1956, do hereby adopt, enact and give to ourselves this constitution, preamble of constitution of Jammu and Kashmir, United Nations Security Council Resolution 47 on Kashmir was passed by UNSC under Chapter 6 of UN Charter, which are non-binding and have no mandatory enforceability. In March 2001, the then Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan during his visit to India and Pakistan, remarked that Kashmir resolutions are only advisory recommendations and comparing with those on East Timor and Iraq was like comparing apples and oranges. Since those resolutions were passed under Chapter 7, which make it enforceable by UNSC, in 2003, then Pakistan President Pervez Musharraf announced that Pakistan was willing to back off from demand for UN resolutions for Kashmir. Moreover, India alleges that Pakistan failed to fulfill the preconditions by withdrawing its troops from the Kashmir region as was required under the same UN resolution of 13 August 1948 which discussed the plebiscite. India has consistently told that UN resolutions are now completely irrelevant and Kashmir dispute is a bilateral issue and it has to be resolved. Under 1972 similar agreement and 1999 Lahore Declaration. Moreover, in November 2010, United Nations excluded Jammu and Kashmir from its annual list of unresolved international disputes under the observation of the United Nations. Security Council, the 1948-49 UN resolutions can no longer be applied, according to India, because of changes in the original territory, with some parts having been handed over to China by Pakistan and demographic changes having been affected in Azad Kashmir and the northern areas.
Another reason for the abandonment of the referendum is because demographic changes after 1947 have been affected in Pakistan-administered Kashmir, as generations of Pakistani individuals non-native to the region have been allowed to take residence in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Furthermore, India alleges that in Jammu and Kashmir state of India, the demographics of the Kashmir Valley have been altered after separatist militants coerced 250,000 Kashmiri Hindus to leave the region. India cites the 1951 elected Constituent Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir, which voted in favour of confirming accession to India. However, 2014 Assembly elections saw highest voter turnout in last 25 years. Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi claimed that it is faith of Kashmiri people in democracy of India and they have given strong message to the world. In response Pakistan holds that a statement from the British Cabinet Mission in India in 1946 confirmed that Jammu and Kashmir, a princely state at the time of partition, was a sovereign territory and Article 7 of the Indian Independence Act of 1947 dealing with lapse of suzerainty of the British Crown over the Indian states reaffirmed this fact. So the Kashmiri people had a vested right of self-determination from the time of independence. The Kashmiri's right of self-determination was further secured by the progressive development of customary international law in relation to this. Collective Freedom, General Assembly Resolution 1514 firmly recognized the right of colonial people to self-determination, and General Assembly Resolution 2625, subsequently affirmed the right of internal self-determination, which the population of Kashmir has consistently been deprived of. The popular Kashmiri insurgency demonstrates that the Kashmiri people no longer wish to remain within India. Pakistan suggests that this means that Kashmir either wants to be with Pakistan or independent. According to the two-nation theory, which is one of the theories that is cited for the partition that created India and Pakistan, Kashmir should have been with Pakistan, because it has a Muslim majority. India has shown disregard to the resolutions of the UN Security Council and the United Nations Commission in India and Pakistan by failing to hold a plebiscite to determine the future allegiance of the state. In 2007 there have been reports of extrajudicial killings in India and administered Kashmir by Indian security forces while claiming they were caught up in encounters with militants. The encounters go largely uninvestigated by the authorities, and the perpetrators are spared criminal prosecution. Human rights organizations have strongly condemned Indian troops for widespread abuses and murder of civilians while accusing these civilians of being militants. Diplomatic relations between India and Pakistan soured for many other reasons and eventually resulted in three further wars in Kashmir the Indo-Pakistani War of 1965, the Indo-Pakistan War of 1971 and the Kargil War in 1999. India has control of 60% of the area of the former princely state of Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan controls 30% of the region. China administers 10% of the state since 1962. The Chenab formula was a compromise proposed in the 1960s, in which the Kashmir Valley and other Muslim-dominated areas north of the Chenab River would go to Pakistan, and Jammu and other Hindu-dominated regions would go to India. The eastern region of the erstwhile princely state of Kashmir has also been beset with a boundary dispute. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, although some boundary agreements were signed between Great Britain, Tibet, Afghanistan and Russia over the northern borders of Kashmir, China never accepted these agreements, and the official Chinese position did not change with the Communist Revolution in 1949. By the mid-1950s the Chinese army had entered the northeast portion of Ladakh. By 1956-57 they had completed a military road through the Aksai Chin area to provide better communication between Xinjiang and western Tibet. 
India's belated discovery of this road led to border clashes between the two countries that culminated in the Sino-Indian War of October 1962. China has occupied Aksai Chin since 1962 and, in addition, an adjoining region. The Trans-Karakoram Tract was ceded by Pakistan to China in 1963. For intermittent periods between 1957, when the state approved its own constitution, and the death of Sheikh Abdullah in 1982, the state had alternating spells of stability and discontent. In the late 1980s, however, simmering discontent over the high-handed policies of the Union government and allegations of the rigging of the 1987 Assembly elections triggered a violent uprising which was backed by Pakistan. Since then, the region has seen a prolonged, bloody conflict between separatists and the Indian Army both of whom have been accused of widespread human rights abuses, including abductions, massacres, rapes and lootings. The army has officially denied these allegations. However, violence in the state has been on the decline since 2004 with the peace process between India and Pakistan. The situation has become increasingly tense politically in recent years. Geography and Climate Jammu and Kashmir is home to several valleys such as the Kashmir Valley, Tawi Valley, Chenab Valley, Poonch Valley, Sindh Valley and Lida Valley. The main Kashmir Valley is 100 km wide and 15,520.3 square kilometers in area. The Himalayas divide the Kashmir Valley from Ladakh while the Pir Panjal Range, which encloses the valley from the west and the south separates it from the Great Plains of northern India. Along the northeastern flank of the valley runs the main range of the Himalayas. This densely settled and beautiful valley has an average height of 1,850 meters above sea level but the surrounding Pir Panjal range has an average elevation of 5,000 meters. Because of Jammu and Kashmir's wide range of elevations, its biogeography is diverse. Northwestern thorn scrub forests and Himalayan subtropical pine forests are found in the low elevations of the far southwest. These give way to a broad band of western Himalayan broadleaf forests running from northwest southeast across the Kashmir Valley. Rising into the mountains, the broadleaf forests grade into western Himalayan subalpine conifer forests. Above the tree line are found northwestern Himalayan alpine shrub and meadows. Much of the northeast of the state is covered by the Karakoram West Tibetan Plateau Alpine Steppe. Around the highest elevations, there is no vegetation, simply rock and ice. The Jhelum River is the only major Himalayan river which flows through the Kashmir Valley. The Indus, Tawi, Ravi and Chenab are the major rivers flowing through the state. Jammu and Kashmir is home to several Himalayan glaciers with an average altitude of 5,753 meters above sea level. The Siachen Glacier is 76 kilometers long, making it the longest Himalayan glacier. The climate of Jammu and Kashmir varies greatly owing to its rugged topography. In the south or around Jammu, the climate is typically monsoonal, though the region is sufficiently far west to average 40 to 50 mm of rain per month between January and March. In the hot season, Jammu City is very hot and can reach up to 40 degrees Celsius whilst in July and August. Very heavy though erratic rainfall occurs with monthly extremes of up to 650 mm. In September, rainfall declines, and by October conditions are hot but extremely dry, with minimal rainfall and temperatures of around 29 degrees Celsius. Because of its closeness to the Arabian Sea, Srinagar receives as much as 635 mm of rain from this source, with the wettest months being March to May with around 85 mm per month. Across from the main Himalaya range, even the southwest cloud bands break up and the climate of Ladakh and Zanskar is extremely dry and cold. Annual precipitation is only around 100 mm per year and humidity is very low. In this region, almost all above 3,000 meters above sea level, winters are extremely cold. 
In Zanskar, the average January temperature is minus 20 degrees Celsius with extremes as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius. All the rivers freeze over and locals make river crossings during this period because their high levels from glacier melt in summer or inhibits crossing. In summer in Ladik and Zanskar, days are typically a warm 20 degrees Celsius, but with the low humidity and thin air nights can still be cold. Lake Tso Moriri. Topographic map of JNK. Ladik. Nagin Lake. River rafting in the Zanska subdistrict of Kargil. View from the Gulmarg slopes. Cable car is used as ski lift. Mountains near Rotang Pass. Natural rock and sand formations along some Kalungpa River in more plains. Administrative divisions. Jammu and Kashmir consists of three divisions. Jammu, Kashmir Valley and Ladik, and is further divided into 22 districts. The Sea Arkin Glacier, although under Indian military control, does not lie under the administration of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Kishwar, Ramban, Riasi, Samba, Bandipura, Gandabal, Kolgam and Shopian are newly formed districts, and their areas are included with those of the districts from which they were formed. Major cities municipal corporations. Two Srinagar, Jammu municipal councils. Six Udhampa, Kathwa, Poonch, and Antnag, Baramulla, Sopari municipal boards. 21 Samba, Ranbur, Singpura, Aknor, Riasi, Ramban, Doda, Bardawa, Kishwar, Kargil, Doruvarinag, Bijbihara, Pulwama, Tral, Bajam, Kolgam, Shopian, Gandabal, Patan, Sambal, Kupwara, Handwara, population of 10 major cities.